Welcome back to Cosmopolitan Market and thank you for still staying there with us on the program. I have my guest joining me live in the studio now. He is Ayodeji Rex Abitogun. He's a lead consultant and chief executive officer at Management Edge Limited. He's also an IT management expert and a tech, a tech entrepreneur in the country. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. It's Christina. good to finally have you in, in <laughs> our studio. I remember the back and forth we have been doing for some days now. Yeah. But it's good to have you here. Join us here Thank on you. NCBN. Thank you. Now, just before we came on, we're looking at the data from the, the segment of the Financial Times, the data on most competitive tech ecosystems in yeah. Nigeria. And we're speaking about how Nigeria is in sixth place and we have some other countries ahead of Nigeria. And you, make a, you made a salient point about the fact that in Nigeria we have more tech startups and but we are occupying a position beneath the top five what's your what's your what's what are your thoughts on that whole scenario that that ranking well the, the thing is uh, you look at the population okay when you look at the population of the six countries mentioned yes. uh, compared to Nigeria population Nigeria population is high okay and huge okay and um, we have uh, the players in cities like Lagos, you have them in Abuja, and um, some in Podakot, uh, Kano. Okay, so when you look at it from from numbers, yes. okay, you may want to pick Nigeria first. But when you look at it from other factors like, um, <coughs> excuse me, like um, uh, like um, funding, mm. okay, like um, um, the environment, uh, how suitable the environment is in terms of doing business, okay, or you look at um, uh, manpower, you look at access to, to support services or basic infrastructure, then you tend to pick these uh, countries mm. higher than Nigeria. Because, um, for example, if um, running a business, yeah, I, I can remember sometimes last week uh, yes. in my office, for like five days, there's no electricity. We run uh, basic, practically on generator or through uh, the the backup power system the inverter run down and we switch to generator and that uh, for good five days so in some countries we possibly will not uh, experience that other things will be like um, uh, if you look at the tax incentive in some countries if you're starting a business afresh okay you get tax over for some period of time yes. okay but we don't have that here so you have young guys you have uh, business people or entrepreneurs uh, trying on their own struggling every day okay they source for funding on their own and um, the way this thing work is it, it plays on your on your mental uh, uh, ab ab capability in terms of uh, if the environment is suitable, you possibly will want to do more. You have uh, more time to do research. Okay. If you go to Lagos, for example, uh, if you go to Yaba, where you have most of the, most of the startups, yes. okay, some people travel, like, they spend like two hours before they even get to, uh, they get to that, um, uh, to get to the, what's it called, uh, the hub. Mm. Okay. The same way here, okay, if, you're just coming out of the university, you possibly will find it difficult to settle down in Abuja, okay, because of cost of rent and other things. Yes. So all this come to play when you look at uh, uh, the, when you look at that data that you just yes. display. And that's why I said, when you look at numbers, we have lots and lots of people, okay, but when you look at um, sustainability, when you look at the uh, success uh, uh, rate, Okay, you tend to look at these people and you look at the uh, environmental factors, environment, uh, uh, suitability of the environment for business, mm. you tend to go with those uh, other countries. Okay, and um, oftentimes, like when you hear of this company is settling down in another country yes. or this company is having its headquarters in another country, and um, Nigerians will go to the social media. We say so many things, we're the giant of Africa, why shouldn't it be here? Okay, yes, it should be here, but um, is government creating the enabling environment for this uh, business to thrive, okay, for people, okay, to have a fresh say, okay, in terms of how things should be done? Mm. Do we have a favorable policy, okay, from the government? Okay, all this uh, has huge role to play in terms of uh, if we want to really lead or if we really want to take the position of giant of Africa or not. 
Okay, now I, I I like the fact that this uh, this is just like a background yeah. to what's happening in the tech uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem yeah. in Nigeria. And uh, when when I was preparing for today's program, something struck me. I was reading an article, and the article the caption was how tough it is to be a tech entrepreneur in Nigeria. Now, is it is it a tough assignment? You know that when, when you go to school, <laughs> the, I, I did not like maths, then they give you maths assignment and you go home and you're struggling to get it done. So is it a tough terrain? Well, um, not just to Nigeria, is a tough terrain for uh, anybody. Uh, just like the popular saying, for you to succeed, you got to work for it. Yes. Okay, so it's not something that uh, even the the environment, the the Western world that will feel that oh they have support from government, they have mm. people will tell you that it is not an overnight uh, success. Okay, it is something that happens over and over. Lots of uh, uh, lots of uh, hurdles that you have to cross. Okay, lots of challenges that you have to face. Okay. For example, I've been running my company for uh, for over 12 years now, yes. and I'll tell you that we've seen a whole lot, okay, in terms of getting to where we are today, mm. okay, uh, from policy, unfavorable public policy, okay, to funding, okay, and uh, to the required uh, support that you need from from um, from stakeholders, okay, so. It is not just Nigeria. It is a tough venture. Okay, like every other thing, for you to pass your exam, you have to read. Yes. Okay, and the, the cost of reading. Okay, some things you don't understand, you read over it again, over and over again. So, not just in Nigeria, but all over the world. But mm. maybe there are some things that is favorable, that is readily available. For yes. example, uh, if I mean, if I mean uh, South Africa, okay. The, the downtime in terms of electricity possibly will be maybe one hour if you go to some uh, some areas in South Africa. But here you could have uh, power outage for, for one day, two days, three days. I just told you five days. Yes. Okay. So in U.S. you possibly will not experience that. Okay. And you have uh, funding. Okay. For example, our universities lately, um, there's a change in um, in the program to accommodate tech entrepreneurship centers across uh, universities and we have a couple of these. But if you ask today, part of their challenges will be uh, getting funding in terms of uh, research and development. And we cannot stay away from research and development. Sure. It's very, very key. The university, they are key stakeholder when it comes to the uh, ecosystem. Okay, so these are some of the things that um, uh, will possibly we experience, but like I said, it is not just unique to Nigeria alone. Okay, uh, UK, US, anywhere in the world, it is not easy for you to run a business successfully. Okay, however, us uh, is a bit peculiar in terms of uh, the environment, in terms of uh, uh, the nation, uh, our thinking, uh, and the way our people, the way our people uh, are motivated to work. Mm. Yeah. I want to. I like the fact that you mentioned universities and you mentioned R and D, R &D research, research and, and development. development now, yeah. the reason why I'm talking about this is we have seen a lot of people bring up tech tech startups. Yeah. Oh, I have a startup. They launch it on social media. They actually even do some of them do elaborate elaborate launch of yeah. these tech startups and give it some months. They go under the water. Now I I hear that funding has been constant in this conversation we yeah. are having, but is is there a knowledge gap? in the ecosystem especially well, for young tech entrepreneurs yeah um, when it comes to tech entrepreneurship apart from funding uh, you have uh, other things to battle with i've talked about government policy um, the other thing is the leadership in terms of the leadership collaboration among the players, internal players, external players. Mm. And internal players are uh, like your staff, okay. Then you have external players like um, uh, investors, yes. okay, that expect that um, if I'm putting in 10 era to this venture, mm. okay, uh, I want to have quick return yes. on my investment within, uh, within a year or two or three. And that 
it's part of what led to where you have uh, this um, uh, this um, a lot of people falling prey of um, dubious people okay and uh, people putting their money into some kind of uh, some kind of venture they don't understand and um, after a while the money get missing nobody is accounting for it you see the guys that are championing it they deserve they disappear to thin here so the thing here is you need to be able to manage people okay you need to have a well-structured and well-defined processes, okay? And you need also the right partners. Now, the people, your staff, okay, or the, the um, partners that come together to say, okay, yes, we want to start this together. Are there a clear understanding of what uh, interest we want to pursue? Mm. Okay, so if my interest does not, if my interest is not synchronizing with your interest yes okay it's going to affect the generality of the organization so now what is the interest of the organization what do you want to achieve are we following it holistically okay or are we just in this because we had a startup 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 so if you take statistics of the total number of uh, startups that have survived five years in the country mm -hmm. you find out that the number is uh the number is very very small yes. okay a lot of startups die within five years mm. so if you survive five years then you give yourself another five years if you survive 10 years then you give yourself another uh, 15 20 years so the whole idea of a tech entrepreneurship or tech ecosystem or startup depending on what you want to call it okay uh it's still very um uh it's still at the infancy stage in our country however the big challenge is for people to really understand that if i'm developing a, a, an app mm. and i'm pushing it to the market okay it is not just developing it for example you see guys that will tell you we have this app this app does this but maybe the key developer is not really the type that is futuristic okay after a while you just feel that you know what uh, Nigeria is not conducive for me. I need to go to Canada. I need to go to U.S. And he leaves. Now, there are many four people or there are many two or three people that they started the company together. They start battling with it to see yes. how they can get things done. Okay. Now, when you launch a product for the first time, okay, they, do you have a budget for continuous marketing? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because a brand is like a music that the very first time that that music uh, hits your ear, you possibly will not make sense or make meaning sure. out of it until after some period of time you start with uh, uh, each time you listen to the music you possibly will be tipping your finger you tip your toes and after a while you move your body and you start uh, miming and reciting it yes. so it become part of you okay and that's the way business is people need to continue to know that this business is solving one social problem and this business there's consistency okay in terms of what you are what you claim to be offering then i want to be sure i want to have that guarantee that anytime i tune to this music it's just like uh, a new song for me okay so these are some of the things that come to play and that's why when people spend so much huge amount of money doing that first launch okay after a while everything just go uh, under the water because maybe you got an investor that uh, pumping some money into the into the business and after a while or maybe after that first money you expect that okay we've been laboring we've been having sleepless night for this idea in the last one year in the last two years at least can we have from this money given to us yes. can we just throw a party can we just have this <laughs> if you don't manage all those things well mm. you just find out that you don't have anything to uh, push the business from that stage to the next stage and when it comes to this i mean at the point you now employ some people that were not part of the initial dream yes okay the initial vision so you employ uh, one or two staffs to work with you and another key thing is when you are bringing people on board you're bringing staff on board you need to be sure that you need to get them to buy into the vision sure okay so and we're in an environment where people look at what should come to them they are merging it uh in they're putting it side by side with what somebody's earning as oil worker or as a banker 
Okay, it doesn't work that way. However, consistency is very, very key, and that's one of the things I preach. You must have enough buffer mm. to take care of staff salary for a period. I mean, for for a period of time. Yes. Okay, because that would be the motivating factor. Uh, nobody should uh, put in hours without getting remuneration. But after a while, you find out that even when some people work for ten months, one year, they they begin to think of peers. Okay, so my, I've been doing a whole lot, so I, you need to increase my salary. And the entrepreneur may not really have enough muscle to capacity. push to the next stage. Yes. So these are some of the things that we face uh, in our country. Indeed, a whole, a whole lot of things that has yeah, been yeah. faced in that sector. Now, I want us to go into the issue of funding, yeah. because you have mentioned the, f the funds might not necessarily be there. Look, if we want to look up to the government to get these funds, these funds might not come as it is expected. Mm -hmm. Now, I want what alternative funding sources can young techpreneurs, if I can call them that, young techpreneurs, yeah. look, for, look forward to? Because we just saw Flutterwave, Flutterwave yeah. attaining unicorn status, yeah. and some other pay stack too, pay stack, I think, yeah. attaining unicorn yeah. status. Now, a lot of young entrepreneurs will be looking at some of these releases and say, Money day inside this tech mm -hmm. tech ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Is it is it I know it's not all dollars, it's not all pounds, mm. but what other alternative funding sources can young techpreneurs also look forward to? Well, um if you look at um the companies that we mentioned, Flutterwave, uh Paystack, mm. they started on their own. Okay. Yes, yes. There's commitment, and this is one of the things that uh, investors are equally looking at. Then they're looking at the product you have, is it, solving, is it solving a social problem? Okay, so if you have a product that is not meeting that social need or that is not solving that social problem, it possibly would be difficult to get um, some form of uh, support. So apart from government, yes, you should look at the... In the ecosystem, you have angel investors, you have uh, venture capitalists. Yes, yes. So the angel investors are men that are men and women. That I was going to say you should break <laughs> the angel <laughs> investors down for, for us to understand better. So these are people that um, uh, are supporting at the ideation stage. Okay. okay, ideation stage where you conceive the idea and uh, possibly you have opportunity to pitch a tent. And they look at it that, oh, well, this thing has a... It has a very uh, bright future. So I can come in as a mentor and uh, provide guidance. Mm. So it may not necessarily be money, okay, but angel investors help you to look at the bigger picture, okay, and the advice on what needs to be done. So they are key decision maker. They are part of the whole process. They can provide their technical expertise. They could provide um, uh, they can provide uh, office space for you, okay, which is coming in form of their equity. Then you have uh, a venture capitalist, which uh, they're bringing in their money, but uh, they're equally looking at uh, how viable is this going to be in the yes. market. So these are other alternative people that you need to, uh, that, um, that an entrepreneur can explore. However, in exploring that, you must have a product that makes sense. You understand you have a product that is not uh, it is not one of those products out there or just uh, uh, maybe a form of reverse engineering that is not you don't really get the concept mm. okay but you know that okay this is working or I find this idea okay it must solve that social problem so right. if it's solving a problem then people will be happy to put their money even if government is not supporting. Okay, and eventually when you decide to, if government decide to support, okay, of course government will equally be looking at, uh, it should create some form of employment. So it takes some burden away from the government. Yes. Okay, because by the time, if you have a, an organization that you've been able to build over time and uh, is employing 100, 200, 200, or even if it is 1050, it's taking that burden away from the people that are out there saying that they have no job, or that government is not doing well enough. Okay, so it take that burden away from them. So the, the, the thing is, before we talk about those alternative sources, because the, 
the, the, the quality of the product that mm. you're pushing to the market or the service you're pushing to the market, okay, is what will attract those other alternative uh, funding that we we'll, we'll identify. Okay, so basically you have to know your onions and your product must be Excellent. viable Excellent. before even alternative investors can come yeah. into to invest in your product. Yeah. Now, I want you to speak towards inclusiveness. Okay. Now, in Nigeria, we have very few female tech preneurs or tech bros, yeah. as, um, yeah. as they like to be called. Yeah. Now, we have we don't have so many of them. I know there's Odun, mm -hmm. Odun and Winnie, and some other people. What's inclusiveness like in that space? Because I was speaking to someone who is a, a woman in tech, yeah. and she was telling me on how you go into business meetings, and investors want to speak. They have, they have more confidence, if I'll put that in quotes, in the male folk rather than investing in a female who wants to develop an app. Yeah. What, what do you have to say about inclusiveness in that? Well, really, um, I think uh, our environment, uh, the culture, and so many things uh, play a major role in this, uh, on the issue of uh, gender inclusiveness. Mm. Um, number one is the women folks on their own, are they motivated to play in that industry? And the government is doing a whole lot in encouraging and a couple of other uh, development uh, partners that are doing a whole lot in ensuring that um, they have more w women or more female going into tech space. Yes. And through the STEM uh, uh, initiative too, yeah. trying to encourage a whole lot of uh, women to practice in that, in that space. But like I said, let's start with culture for example. Uh, growing up, you possibly we experience where if your parents are to buy a toy, they give you a doll mm -hmm. and True. You, you concentrate on True. braids True. and other things. Meanwhile, your brother will possibly be given some... A car, yeah, sometimes a, car, a some robotic. A ro yeah. Yes. So, when you look at it from that angle, okay, the culture does not encourage our women to go into that space. So, a lot, I know that a lot of People, even government and um, uh, some uh, advocates, they are championing for more women to, to go into there. But we need to work more on our culture. Two is that um, if growing up, you are asked what you want to be, you possibly will say you want to be a nurse, you want to be if, a doctor, like a in lawyer. those days that you <laughs> see the, the cap that uh, the nurse used to put yes. on. A lot of us are, will like that. So a lot of ladies will tell you, I want to be a nurse. I want to be a uh, doctor. I want to be a lawyer. Okay, nobody want to be an engineer True. because they believe that engineer is for the male folks. If you go to uh, universities, uh, if you go to school of engineering or faculty of engineering, depending on the nomenclature, you find out that you have there are some departments that you enter that you possibly will not even find just one lady. Mm. Okay, you, or maybe in some you have just one lady and you have others male. So, these are some of the things that then do we have, uh, like, do we have some form of incentives to encourage women folks? Mm. For example, if you are taking a science courses, okay, is there something that says uh, for every woman or for every female that are pursuing engineering, if the male are paying hundred thousand, the female will pay fifty thousand euro. Okay, so if we don't have such policies to encourage. Uh, women, because it's not until when you graduate or when you are now true, thinking of standing true. on your own. It should start from, it should be part of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, growing up, I, will, I remember I was always uh, uh, going to trade uh, meetings with my, with my dad. <coughs> Excuse me. And it puts, it, it makes me to think of business. Yes, you and understand? even become critical with your exactly, thinking. Exactly, you, you'll be critical in your thinking and you'll be more uh, inquisitive in terms True. of why this, why that. Okay, uh, if you have a father or a parent that, if you have a father who is possibly an automotive engineer, he will want to go with his male child to 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 the workshop, the workshop or to his place of work than the than the female. than the female. So okay, maybe the was oh you the best that will happen go and stay with your mom, help your mom in go the market the when you are, go to the kitchen. Okay. So these are some of the things that we, we face. Now when you now come to the female on their own, 
One of the attributes of entrepreneurs is that you must be confident. You must be confident in yourself. Okay, do they have the right, do they have the confidence? And of course we have other social uh, hurdles, okay? Like you want to listen to a man than a woman, okay? Do we have women that can say, no, you must listen to me? Okay, this is what I have on the table, and this is how you should go. Mr. Eric, I want right. to come in now. Yeah. I want to, I want to, sorry, sorry to cut to come in. Don't you think that 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 culture, even though that culture challenge is still there, don't you think that thing is changing? Like, uh, because I think I'm beginning to see a reorientation in the system, and here's why I said so. <laughs> on on social media platforms yeah. now in Nigeria, and I have actually met more. Now we have more female tech females playing in the tech space so don't you think we are beginning to see a paradigm shift when it comes to that or do you feel more needs to be done more needs to be done <coughs> excuse me more needs to be done in the sense that um, yes we're seeing more voices from the female from the female camp mm. okay but the thing is what is the percentage where do you have them do you have them in katina do you have them in gombe do you have them in uh Medugri? yes do you have them in Ekiti? Do you have them in Bayasa? Mm. Okay, so we shouldn't judge by what we see in Abuja True. or Lagos. It should True. cut across board. True. Okay, if you talk about all this uh, sector, you find male almost in every state, local government, doing all these things we're talking about. How many female, do, where do you have them? So the advocates that are advocating for uh, mm. gender inclusiveness, okay, do they take it down to the grassroots? You get it. So we cannot rely on what we see on social media. Of course, on social media, you see some vibrant women yes. that will come up to say, yes, I'm doing this. We, I mean, fantastic. We celebrate them. You understand? But how many of these women, okay, do we have in rural areas? How many of them, okay, can... So we're saying, yes. the women folks need to be confident in their approach to, uh, to being involved in... Uh, technology uh, entrepreneurship mm. and be, be besides that is they must have that resilience um, resilient attitude to say I'm pursuing this this is one thing I want to achieve and I'm not giving up for male folks they can decide to go over and over yes but for female folks <coughs> they feel that well um, possibly there's something they don't like about me or maybe this is not just for me Okay, and this doesn't come that way. Okay, it's more of perseverance. Mr. Rex, I also want to still say that. Do you also think that the, the, probably from, <coughs> because I'm talking from the, the experience that was narrated to me, because the young lady said she pitched everything she needed to pitch, but she was still rejected. And this is someone that from her track record, she has been very resilient in the space. Well, um... It's unfortunate, really, mm. okay, but that's the reality, mm. okay. Some, and there are reasons for it, according to some people, yes. which I really don't buy it, even in your in office environment. Yes. For example, if, if there are some organizations that when a woman is pregnant, they find a way to, like, uh, replace her with someone else. Mm. Okay, these are things that happen that should be condemned. Yes. Okay, and um, like the, the young lady you talk about, it depends on what uh, the investors mm. okay, are looking out for. Sure. And it depends on the problem uh, she's trying to solve, solve and how she's equally selling it. Yeah. Okay, the fact that you are doing well in a small space doesn't mean you will do well in a bigger space. Mm. For example, if somebody who is an active player in a small space come around, it person may buy into the product. Yeah. Okay, but somebody who has really experienced, has seen different... Um, different um, uh, products, different services, mm. or different people may look at it and know this is not what I want. And uh, but the main thing is that she shouldn't give up. Yeah. Okay. Then other things is there's need for women to. Um, I know there are a lot of uh, women organizations. Okay, that are championing uh, women in tech and yes, other and things. Also STEM issues. Yes, STEM mm. issues. But I think there's need for more. 
Okay. Another thing is you find some of our ladies that even equally want to be a player in the tech space. They are not even associated with these people because mm -hmm. now they feel that True. well, these people they are old people or these people they um, they don't belong to my generation. Okay. And these are the people that want to bring in the money. These are the people that will recommend them. Okay. So this is very very important for. Uh, for female folks that want to get involved in this. Networking is very, very important. Mm. And that's the summary of what I'm trying to say okay. about uh, networking with older people. Okay. So, Mr. Rex, as a way of rounding off our discussion today, yeah. of course, time is never enough when know, it comes, to, <laughs> when it comes to discussions like like this. What's your call to, especially the federal government now? Because I know a lot of private people are playing yeah. in the tech space. It's largely private driven, if yeah. I want to put it that yeah. way. So, what's your call to relevant agencies in charge of, the, there's a Ministry of Digital Economy, yeah. I, there's also NITDA. Mm -hmm. So what's your call to these agencies and government generally to develop the tech ecosystem in Nigeria? Well, for, for government, um, the solution would be we need to have a favorable policy. Let's mm -hmm. start with that. Okay. If the policy is right and we're implementing it to the letter, you find out that um, People will not feel cheated. Some people are scared today because they feel if I'm pushing my product to the market, okay, do I have a law that protects my True. my product? True. Intellectual okay, property. intellectual property. Okay, that need to be looked into. Two is um, we need to encourage more women, more women folks, in uh, to be an active player. Okay, then not just that, uh, we need to equally. Uh, the agencies must come together, they must work together. Now, if you look at, you talk about Ministry of Digital mm. Economy and uh, Ministry of, Commu Ministry of Communications, Communications and Digital, and digital Economy. Economy. Um, it is a ministry started with policies to help this, but neither is there to encourage development and yes. some of this inclusiveness. You have uh, Asmedan, okay, in charge of a small and medium enterprise. You have... Um, you have a couple of other government uh, yeah. agencies. There must be synergy, and there must be a way of uh, having mentors, okay, a mentorship program that we has, and also following through. Because we've seen cases where government will say they are empowering people, they give them money, okay, and there's no any, there's no any clear uh, monitoring process okay, or evaluation, monitoring and evaluation process to say, the money we gave to uh, Christiana last year, what has she done with it? Yeah. Okay. Then from here, what is the next stage? Stop. Okay. From there, people will share their success stories, okay, and people, uh, other partners can come on board and equally uh, assist in that regard. All right. Thank you so much, Ayo Dejires Abitogun, Lead Consultant and Chief Executive Officer, Management Edge Limited. Thank you for coming on Cosmopolitan Market today. Supplier. Thank you for joining us on the program. And that's where we call it a wrap for the program today. You've heard it all for what you need to do as a tech perennial to thrive in the system and also what the responsibilities the government is saddled with creating favorable policies for these these companies or these, these tech startups in Nigeria to thrive and not just survive, not even struggle for them to also thrive and be shining lights in the global tech space. Don't forget, follow us on all our social media platforms for more information in economy, finance, commerce. The interview with IOD Direct Abitogun will also be on our YouTube page in case you just miss out on the interview. The interview will be on NCBN Media House on YouTube so you can catch up on some of the salient points here as mentioned here. My name is Christiana Amodu. Keep staying safe and bye for now.